Thanks for joining us. We have the latest news coming from the presidential villa, Abuja, where President Bola Tinubu has sworn in the newly appointed ministers after their screening and confirmation by the Senate last Wednesday. This follows the discharge of five ministers as part of the eight far-reaching measures by President Tinubu to rejuvenate his cabinet. At the brief ceremony held at the council chambers of the presidential villa, the president thanked National Assembly for its expeditious screening and confirmation of the seven new ministers. The president expressed happiness that the new ministers have taken the oath of office and ready to serve at a time of challenging economic growth and other security issues. He also commended his team that have worked tirelessly to put Nigeria on the path of recovery, insisting the economic recovery is on the horizon. A State House, okay, a State House correspondent, Femi Akande, will be joining us much later in the course of the bulletin to bring us up to speed with regards to this confirmation by the President. We'll move on now to judicial matters, where the Court of Appeal seating in Abuja has overturned the conviction of Justice Walter Onoye by the Court of Conduct Tribunal over false assets declaration. A three-member panel of justices of the Court of Appeal acquitted and discharged Justice Onoye as a consequential order from the terms of settlement between him and the federal government. The panel entered judgment in terms of settlement agreement by both parties. The court ordered that the bank accounts of Justice Onoye that were frozen should be made accessible to him. The court also held that the Court of Conduct Tribunal lacked the jurisdiction to entertain the suit in the first instance. The tribunal did not give room for the National Judicial Council, which is the statutory body responsible for sanctioning erring judges to hear the case, but proceeded with the matter. We move to Oyo State, where experts have expressed concern over the growing trend of cybercrimes in the country. We are also calling for increased awareness on cybersecurity to protect Nigeria's cyberspace against all forms of threat. Olaide Oyewale has details. The impact of cybercrime in Nigeria is alarming as the country experienced a 174% increase in cybercrimes between January and June 2022. This is attributed to the rapid digital transformation an increased online presence due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Following this development, this conference was initiated to raise awareness on how Nigerian digital space can be secured, with experts expressing concern over the level of prevalence of this decadence on Nigerian youth. This project particularly is targeted at young, young people in Nigeria, small business owners, and uh, uh, message to the youths and message to small business owners is that look we need to be more cyber aware yes if you are not particular if you are not careful about the personal information you are sharing online you are not only putting yourself at risk you're equally putting all of your friends and family who are connected to you at risk according to the economic and financial crimes commission Nigeria lost approximately $500 million to cybercrime in 2022, as the Central Bank of Nigeria reported that the banking sector lost 7.2 billion naira to internet fraud in 2010. However, cybersecurity professionals have emphasized the need for young persons to be fully aware of this trend and make efforts to protect their privacy and data. And to achieve that to prevention and enforcement and coordination, collaboration with other critical stakeholders like NGO, like keeping the academic, like other law enforcement agencies, both locally and um, those at the international um, environment. I believe cyber, cyber security should still have its own. Uh, that's one of the things we've done in UI and which UC has also done. Uh, we're encouraging to do this program. 
starting from cyber security all the way. Cyber crime in Nigeria poses serious threat to the country's development, and experts here are advocating an advanced level of literacy on the issue to put a stop to the societal decadence. Olaido Yewole, TVC News, Ibadan. The security situation in parts of Niger State presents a challenge that is gradually undermining peace and stability in Nigeria's largest state that hosts critical infrastructure essential for food and energy security. Now, security experts say efforts must be ramped up to curb the security challenges in the wake of vandalism of power infrastructure. Sifonisian has details. Monday, October 28, days after bandit attack on the Shiro Romando electricity transmission line in Niger State caused a blackout in the northern region of the country. The electricity tower that has gone been brought down by bandits and that together uh, we are pushing this morning to see how we secure uh, the, the, the roads. Although bulk electricity supply is being restored, the incident exemplifies the security challenges in Nigeria's largest state by landmass and the extent of its impact. Terror in Nigeria's largest state, a report by SBM Intelligence, a private security company, indicates that since 2020, when former Boko Haram leader Abubakar Shekau attempted to pivot the group's activities from the northeast, Niger state has become home to competing factions of insurgents. The problems that the North is having is tied directly towards the security crisis in, in Niger state. I would think that it is a self-fulfilling prophecy of some sort because uh, as far back as we had warning about the, the security threats in that particular state, we are one of the first people to send out the warning that uh, Abu Bakr Shekau, when he was alive, was trying to move men and personnel. The state holds critical infrastructure essential for food and energy security, but the activities of terrorists or bandits undermine its peace and stability. That the military camp now know to have been taken over by the bandit who have to say they have established at least a different camp on this land. Honorable Abdullah Isa's remarks on the floor of the Niger State House of Assembly pitted him against the military authorities who have now dismissed his submission, describing it as incorrect and inaccurate. In this first quarter, but the Director of Defense Media Operations, Major General Edward Buba, acknowledged in the statement that, quote, our ongoing operations, particularly in Niger State, is against terrorists. It is therefore erroneous for such threat to be described in any other form other than terrorists. End of quote. We had thought that from the outset of the rainy season, we would be able to farm. But the security challenges are affecting us in Kutangora. There are villages we dare not enter. Given the shared distribution of the security crisis, for, for some people, they might only look at the problem in Mariga and Kotangora, but the problem goes far beyond just these two local government areas. As a matter of fact, when the problem in Nigeria just started, it didn't start in these two local government areas. As of four years ago, two local government areas that were most buried were Rafi LG. Uh, as well as Shiruru. Right now, Shiruru is a hotly contested area between Boko Haram, the Nigerian military, and Ilugu miners, many of them foreigners. So occasionally, maybe once or twice, they get to the flashpoints, uh, flashpoints of battles between the Nigerian military and Boko Haram. While efforts are on to curb the challenges, factors responsible for security issues are rife. Sifon Asian, TVC News, Abuja.